All right, everybody. College football week eight delivered in the amount of craziness this weekend gave us. I don't even want to start. I don't even want to start with the games. We have to start with something else. First off, Nick Rolovich, he got fired from Washington State for not complying with vaccination policies in the state of Washington. Isn't that crazy? It, it is crazy. Also, some of his assistants also got fired for not doing the same thing. Again, it, it's not that hard. Just just do it so you can keep your job, man. I don't even know if this man's going to get any money from this. I mean, considering that this is, you know, college coaches, you know, hashtag college coaches, we should say, um, in all honesty, what a, what a dummy. You got fired over just not getting a simple shot. How stupid are you? How stupid are you? Speaking of stupidity, the leaders of Conference USA are looking pretty stupid right now with the way things have been going for them this week because the Sud Belt said, hey, Southern Miss, come here. Come here, we're adding you. Come join us. And Southern Miss said, yes, I will join you. And it looks like Marshall, Old Dominion, and an FCS call-up. Y'all might know them by the name of James Madison University. Yeah, yeah that James Madison. It looks like those t three teams plus Southern Miss are coming. Now, the holdup for Marshall, ODU, and JMU right now is is that one, Marshall's president hasn't really, they, they are transitioning presidents. And, you know, again, the advice for Marshall, ODU, and JMU are not out yet. They will be out some point next week. But the Sun Belt took three members from Conference USA. So now Conference USA is down at 11. So what else happened to the Conference USA? Well, the American tried to get Air Force in Colorado State, and that failed. Tried to get some Sun Belt teams, that also failed. Tried to get Boise State and San Diego State, you know, again. It was believed that, uh, or at least I'm thinking they tried to get up again. I know that first attempt back in 2013 failed for obvious reasons, but that also failed. So what is plan D? Plan D is take schools from metropolitan areas, and guess who has schools in metropolitan areas that they shouldn't have? Conference USA! Yup. So my alma mater, UNT, is going to the American Athletic Conference. Who is joining them? This, uh, keep in mind, this expansion committee was led by SMU's AM, AD and Memphis's a, AD. Again, SMU, I don't know why they have, I don't know why, you know, UNT is coming to the AAC because SMU just does not give a damn about UNT. And UNT, you know, they think they care about football, but they don't. They think they care about, you know, getting themselves to higher standards, but they don't. As an alum, and I still see UNT stuff, you know, about Denton on my timeline, on Twitter every day and stuff like that. Denton's just not a pretty place to be. It, it kind of sucks, in all honesty. But, who else is the AAC adding? Well, Charlotte, again, metropolitan area. It actually makes sense. UTSA, again, really good this year. We'll talk about them in a moment. Rice, to fill that Houston area where Houston has now left to the Big 12. Again, remember, SEC took Texas and Oklahoma. Big 12 countered by taking Cincy. Houston, BYU, and UCF, you know, three of those schools are from the American. So, you know, UNT, Charlotte, UTSA, Rice, you know, to fill the Houston app, UAB, who revived and has come back as a football juggernaut in Conference USA, and FAU in the Boca Raton area, you know, more famous in the last couple years for being a Lane Kiffin coach team. But that's about it. I mean, there's really nothing to do with Boca Raton, in all honesty. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of like a tourist trap, in all honesty. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Boca Raton residents. I mean, correct me if I am wrong. I probably am. But, I mean, I don't hear anything about Boca Raton. I'm just, I'm just being real. But now, you know, Conference USA, now you only have five members. 
So what did they do? What are they going to do? Because guess who said no when you should have added them, you know, years ago? Or at least somebody should have added this team a couple years ago. And I know the package that comes with taking liberty, but you gotta be a real idiot to, to have liberty tell you no. And Liberty said no. So what? The, so what does Conference USA do? Did they take New Mexico State? Did they call up you know WAC schools? Because I mean there are schools in the WAC. The WAC just got back being, to being a football conference, but the WAC is not ready. A lot of the schools are not ready. Tarleton State is not ready. Definitely not ready. Sam Houston State. Nobody goes there. You know nobody. No, nobody. Nobody in these. Two, nobody in that conference is ready yet. To move up to FBS, so I don't even know. I don't even know why I'm still talking about the whack here. So, CUSA on Life Sport. Do they get UConn and UMass? Probably not. It's probably not going to happen. I think this conference should die. Plain and simple, it should die. It has been incompetent for years and years and years now. You know, with their commissioner Judy McLeod. Years and years and years and years of incompetence. Bad TV deals, poor play on the field, especially in the past couple of years. You know, you know these. There were teams that were ranked, but they got knocked out of the rankings like that. You know, poor play, poor TV deals. I mean, just poor decision making all around. I mean, remember the whole, you know, weird pods like scheduling thing. I thought that was stupid. You know, I thought that was stupid back in the day. I thought that was stupid then. I still think it's stupid now. But I mean, I'm glad CUSA went away from that for college basketball. I mean, there's no, there's no way the CUSA is going to be able to get anything done. You know, now with only five members. They can't have a conference because you gotta have eight members, not six. Brett McMurphy, eight FBS members for a conference, and you gotta have eight for basketball too. So gonna happen again I think it should just die it should die let conference USA die and this is the best way it can happen now the timeline for all these schools joining is probably 2023 that's probably when this is going to take place and that's probably when these other schools you know with the Big 12 gets their BYU they'll, they'll have BYU already but I believe that you know Houston Cincy and UCF will be joining in 2023 now. And same thing goes for SEC, you know, Texas and Oklahoma coming. So I think, and that, that's kind of what a lot of people have said anyway, you know, Texas and Oklahoma, including myself. I think a lot of us have said 2023 is probably the target since 2022 has pretty much come, come and went, you know, with the SEC schedule being released uh, about a month or so ago. So 2023 looks to be the big change at the, that also impacts the college football playoff. But speaking of the college football playoff, the race for the college football playoff was shaken up once again this week as five top 25 teams fall. We finally get to talk about these games. Let's dive in. Wednesday night and Thursday night. Wednesday night had Coastal Carolina and Appalachian State. Now, Appalachian State really was in control of this game. You know, Coastal kept it, you know, they kept it tied, and, and I mean, they kept it close the entire game. But a couple big, big plays by Appalachian State's defense, I mean, huge plays in this game, were able to have App State get the walk off field goal, and Coastal Carolina. We can finally write them off. We can finally, you know, stop talking about them. Pretty much. I mean, this is still a pretty good team. Still a pretty good team, the chance are. But a lot of people, including myself, have now realized that Coastal's, care, that Coastal's schedule was not good. Not really good. And they finally got exposed for what they are. They are who we thought they were. SMU, on the other hand, on Thursday night took care of Tulane. Much better than Oklahoma did. Way better. You know, I mean, there, there, there was a couple of bursts in there by Tulane, but SMU took care of the job, took care of business. All right, Saturday slate, noon Eastern. Let's get right into it. Number two, Cincinnati. Now, Cincinnati, they were struggling with Navy at first. Again, I, like I said, the option is not something that you can just walk in and just run all, you know, just 
run rough shot all over it. You have to play strategic. You have to play pretty good against this type of run game. And I mean, there were times at this game where, I mean, Cincinnati, I mean, one of these defenders' speed, I mean, this defense is, is just unreal, man. Defense for Cincinnati is unreal. I, I don't care what y'all say. Honestly, number two in the country. They are number two. It, it, this is this is the number two team in the country. You have to. If, there's gonna be there's gonna be games like this where Cincinnati, you know, has to play Navy. You know, there's there's has been games like this where teams that are the top teams in the American Athletic Conference have played Navy, and Navy trips them up. Houston was one example a couple years back when Houston was supposed to you know be that team to try and break the barrier of, get, of a G5 getting into the college football playoff first time, and that didn't happen for obvious reasons. But Cincinnati, they took care of Navy, and by the third quarter, this game was basically over. Now, Navy had a late surge, though, but again, a couple of bad plays in that first half, especially a couple of bad, you know, one of them was an onside kick call that did not go well for Navy. Again, bad plays, and Poor, I mean, just just poor defense for Navy. I mean, it just has to be good, you know, in quite some time. But, I mean, Cincinnati is able to survive. Congrats to the Bearcats. I can't say the same for Oklahoma, though. They survive, but this is against Kansas. Multiple times, you guys were down 10 points. And honestly, it should have been more because one. I mean, there was a couple plays in this game that ref ball came into play, and I got to tell you, one of these calls that were you know forward progress. The, the the dispute is over forward progress now. One of these you know went against the Kansas Jayhawks. They went against Kansas. It did not go their way. But the other one, the other one was in contention until you know later in the afternoon when the rule was actually you know put into place just to save face probably but Kennedy Brooks his progress was stopped you know whistles never rang or anything like that and Caleb Williams takes the ball out of his hand now it's a dispute to whether he was behind the line of scrimmage or you know across it but yet Caleb Williams makes a dynamic play and he made another one a few moments later after that, or I think it was before that too, but I mean, again, a couple dynamic plays by Caleb Williams that couldn't have been done by Spencer Rattler, in all honesty, and those dynamic plays by Williams put this game out of reach. I mean, Kansas did have, you know, a couple big drives again. They were up 10 multiple times, but yet, you know, Oklahoma, the, the talent finally, you know, the talent of the Oklahoma team that's supposed to have talent finally decided to wake up and I mean they only went by 12 but I mean this game was a lot closer than it should have been too close as for Penn State on the other hand they were the second team to fall at it they were the second top 25 team to fall and they fell due to 360 yards rushing from Illinois this game went to nine overtimes and you know two-point conversions come into play this time. You know, the rule changes and everything. My God, horrid play calling on these two-point conversions. Dropped pass by Sean Clifford. Dropped pass on the trick play. Bad runs, like you're doing two-yard runs up the gut. Horrible throws to the end zone. But yet, a jet sweep by Illinois. A jet sweep play is the one that gets it done. And Penn State falls in overtime. Their season, you know, honestly, with the two losses in Big Ten play, that might be the dagger. That might be the dagger for Big Ten play. That's the that's definitely a dagger for your college ball playoff hopes. But Penn State, Big Ten is not kind. You know, again, the rest of the Big Ten East is still up and waiting for you, and. I know Penn State fans are going to be, you know, really, really pissed at me. They're going to be pissed at me. I mean, they're going to be like, I uh, mean, Sean Clifford was injured, yada, yada, yada. But no, Sean Clifford is mediocre. We've been saying that on this channel. We've been saying that. Iowa fans can't agree with me. I think they will agree with me, you know, that Penn State was just not that good of a team. They really haven't done anything, you know, that, that says, oh, 
this was a you know this was a top five team to me. This is this is a team you know that has big victories. I mean, we know Wisconsin's not good. We know Auburn is middling as hell. But you know, Penn State season's over, buddy. Pack it up, go home, get ready for Ohio State. We'll talk about Ohio State in a moment here. Um, Northwestern Michigan. Honestly, the same things we've been saying about Michigan can apply to this game because Blake Corum, Son Haskins, 200 plus rushing yards again. Defense, especially a block punt in this game by Michigan, and the Wolverines just dominate. Easy victory. You know, it was a little close early on, but easy victory the rest of the way. Wake Forest Army, on the other hand, this game was insane. This game was insane. This game was beyond crazy. Let me tell you, Hartman, Sam Hartman threw five touchdowns, multiple 70-yard bombs. I mean, there was a point where there were 28 points scored in like a minute. That's how crazy this game was. I mean, Army had a trick pass play on fourth down, and it gets picked off for pick six. Insanity. I mean, Wake Forest, you know, we know, we know that Wake Forest is a good team, but they could not stop Army on the ground or in the air today, but it's okay, it doesn't matter, because these Army DBs are trash, trash DBs, like, this is, this is crazy stuff right here for Army, like, this usually doesn't happen, they get beat, they got beat deep, multiple times, multiple times by Hartman's receivers, you know. But he's Wake Forest receives. I mean, Wake Forest hangs on. You know, takes the he takes a victory from the from the clutches of defeat. You know, because I mean, this could have gone either way with the way the score was seventy to fifty six. This could have gone either way. In all honesty, my God, what a game! Can we get another one of those, please? You know, that's true Big Twelve football right there. True Big Twelve football. Where is Wake Forest and Army's invitation to the Big Twelve? Damn it! But anyway. Wake Forest is undefeated still, and with the way the rest of the ACC has been, we'll talk about it. You know, we'll talk about it as we get to the rest of these games here. Wake Forest could they be climbing up? It looks like they'll be climbing up in the top 25. It looks like they'll be climbing up in the ACC. Things are looking good for the Deeks, baby. So let's go to those 3:30 Eastern games here. Wisconsin, Purdue. I mean, what can you say about Wisconsin that has been said? Graham Mertz is not good. In fact, he only threw it eight times. But that didn't matter. It didn't matter if he threw it eight times because this Wisconsin team ran over Purdue. I mean, O'Connell with three bad interceptions. Three. Three bad interceptions. I mean, both these teams bumbled a couple times as well. And that's it. The Boilermakers in the top 25 get them right back out shoot them in the back their top 25 hopes are done so unbelievable I mean Wisconsin dominated Purdue this is this was not supposed to be the way it was supposed to be but yet here it is my goodness man my goodness Oregon UCLA one of the bigger games today probably the probably the biggest game of the day I mean what can you say about Anthony Brown it has been said already? I mean, he, he just did not look good out there. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I mean, he had a touchdown rushing. That's good and all. I mean, you know, that, that's, I mean, all that's good. I mean, he, he, he played okay, but he threw two terrible interceptions. One of them was a greedy play. Like, this was really greedy by Oregon late when they could have wasted more time. But yet, no pick in the end zone. That allowed UCLA to get back into it. So I mean, UCLA was up 14 to nothing, and then Oregon went on a 34 to three run where it was 34 17. But you know DTR, you, you you all know what this man can do, and that's exactly what he did. Put UCLA back into this game with the help of this defense. But Oregon's defense just has a little bit more firepower to it. I mean, what can you say about Kayvon Thibodeau that hasn't been said already, and Noah Sewell as well? I keep forgetting to mention him. I'm so sorry that I keep forgetting to mention him. I mean, this defense is unreal with those two guys. DCR gets injured late, and you know another Garbers, you know, comes in, and you know, despite making the clutch fourth down, 
UCLA decides to get greedy as well, trying to do too much when they could have tied the game because Oregon had missed the PAT. And interception, ball game, Oregon still with just the one loss. And the Pac-12 survives another week. Good stuff. Good game. Really good game. Oklahoma State, Iowa State was the same thing. There was a terrible taunting call on Xavier Hutchinson, but that's all right. That is all right because, I mean, he caught a huge touchdown from Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy played pretty well. You know, he's been pretty inconsistent throughout his time at Iowa State. You know, with, I mean, he's been a turnover machine, but he didn't have any turnovers. He didn't have any turnovers against Oklahoma State. And a big touchdown late from Brees Hall. You know, despite the fact that Spencer Sanders played pretty damn well, three touchdowns for him, it didn't matter. There was a fourth down play at the end of the game where Oklahoma State thought they had a first down. I personally thought it was short by just like maybe like an inch or two. But in the end, Oklahoma State falls to Iowa State. And I know I know I know Oklahoma State was the underdog in this game for some reason, but I mean it is what it is, you know. Iowa State's going to storm the field no matter what. You, you already knew this was coming. Ten, almost ten years removed from Oklahoma State, you know, losing their chance in the national championship. The national championship hopes may be dashed again by Iowa State. There could be a two-loss team in the Big 12 going to the Big 12 championship in all honesty with the way this conference has been. You know, maybe even two with the way Oklahoma's been playing because, I mean, again, Oklahoma's tough slate is coming. It's coming for them. So what about Clemson Pitt? <laughs> DJ Wheelock on the leg got benched. He got benched off of a shovel pass that Pitt took back for a touchdown. Kenny Pickett didn't have to do too much. He threw for nearly 300 himself or over 300, a couple touchdowns himself. And Pitt, Pitt still has just the one loss. They're going to be moving on up in these polls. And now Pitt could be setting themselves up for some big time shenanigans coming soon. I mean, this this is, I mean again that inexplicable loss to Western Michigan though. I think that that looms large over Pitt being ranked higher. You know, but I mean, good God, man! DJ Uilagalele got benched. That's crazy, crazy stuff. LSU Ole Miss, on the other hand, this was Eli Manning's. You know. His jersey got retired, and his number got enshrined in the stadium at Ole Miss. Ed Zones were painted Manning for some reason. I mean, it is what it is there. And Ole Miss, they continue to impress. They continue to impress Matt Corral, continues to impress this bevy of backs that this team has, continues to impress. I mean, they held LSU in check. They kept them in check, which is 17 points, you know. This 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 was just not good for Ed Ogeron, who's going right out the door soon. He, he, this is not good for the Tigers of LSU. This is not good for them at all. What a win for Ole Miss! They continue their momentum as Auburn looms. You know it's going to be a tough one next week for the Rebs. So we move on to the seven Eastern window, and I got to tell you. I thought I thought San Diego State Air Force was going to be a lot closer than what it was because the, the score may be close. This game was over at halftime. There was only 130 yards passing in this game. Two key turnovers from Air Force early. We're talking in the first quarter. One of them was a beautiful, a beautiful one-handed pick six. The other was a massive fumble. You know. I mean, Air Force, you know, couldn't really recover the rest, rest of the way. I mean, sure, 20-14, to 14, it looks a lot closer. I mean, again, this game was over at halftime. I mean, San Diego State's defense is unreal. They proved that they were the number one rushing defense in the country with their performance. My goodness, man. Forcing Air Force to have to throw the ball and stuff like that. Forcing them to have put their backup in. Not Hasek Daniels putting their backup in. Um, I mean, man. We're going to be seeing the San Diego State team a lot, aren't we, on this channel. There's going to be a lot of late kicks. It's going to be a lot of late games for these Aztecs. What a win for Brady Hoke and his squad. Another Brady Hoke-led team is, you know, past 6-0. Crazy stuff. 
Alabama's defense, on the other hand, did not hit the memo. It's still bad. Like, head to the hooker, despite throwing for like 280 something yards, you know, I mean, the balls were a bit too one dimensional. That's why they really lost this game, you know. They relied too much on hooker, couldn't get the run game going. But, I mean, Robinson got three touchdowns. I mean, Bryce Young got, got another couple touchdowns throwing. But, hey, it's okay. You know, again, if it weren't for Hendon Hooker, he'd really just be the only guy to do anything for Tennessee. I mean, Tennessee was way too one-dimensional in this game. Too one-dimensional. A bad throw by Hendon Hooker led to a pick that led to Alabama start getting the route going. I mean, Tennessee loses by 28. But did they really... The score will say, yes, they did. That's pretty obvious. But this Alabama defense, this pass defense got torched multiple times. Multiple times by this Tennessee, you know, by this Tennessee passing attack. This could not keep happening. They got torched for 300 last week against Mississippi State, despite the fact that they only, you know, despite the fact that Mississippi State only had nine points. That's still 300 yards passing against its defense. Penalties were costly early too. Very costly penalties. Like this Alabama team is very, very flawed. There is, there is definitely a second loss somewhere. It could happen. It could happen. Now you're never 100% sure on these things. I'm never 100% sure on anything. But I do know that you know Alabama does not have a good defense so far in SEC play. Like SEC play has shown me that Alabama's defense is not there. It's not there. They got to get it together quickly. They got to get it together quick if they want something good to happen. UTSA takes care of Louisiana Tech. Rank Harris with a couple touchdowns. McCormick chips in on the ground with three more touchdowns. And UTSA, they await UTEP in two weeks on November 6th. That could be a doozy, my God. That could be a doozy of a game right there. Game day could be coming to that game because of the way November 6th slate looks. It looks kind of ugly right now. It looks like it's also going to have no top 25 matchups. And that's a great time for game day to actually go somewhere they need to be going instead of going to Georgia five weeks in a row. But it is what it is there. <laughs> Ohio State, Indiana. I mean, C.J. Stroud had four more touchdowns. I mean, Travion Henderson chipped him with another couple touchdowns. This defense... For Ohio State is legitimate now. We can, I mean, we can say that. I mean, this is, this is just straight up nasty. 114 yards allowed. You gotta be kidding me, man. Dominating this Indiana Hoosier squad. I mean, I know Indiana's had you know some bad breaks with the way their schedule has been. But my goodness, Ohio State, you didn't need to do that. You didn't need to beat them up that bad. My God. Now, next Saturday night's showdown with Penn State is going to be crazier because of the way things are, you know. You know, with the way things are now, with Penn State losing a second game, you know, now things a little bit, the stakes are even higher for Ohio State. The stakes are even higher. If they lose that game, you know, if Ohio State finds a way to lose that game, their playoff hopes are done too, so. But it doesn't look like, you know, Ohio State's really letting up, you know, the talk of, Playoff right now it looks like they're setting that they're setting to feed out the, the uh, to squeeze out the rat poison and just dominate. They've dominated the last three weeks, and if they dominate Penn State like this on Saturday, my goodness, we could be seeing a dangerous Ohio State team very soon, man. NC State Miami is yeah. Uh, this game was far too close for NC State. I mean, this NC State team got smacked on defense or rather they got shredded not smacked they got shredded on defense how do you let Tyler Van Dyke a guy who's been a backup who's had you know to endure this controversy with Miami too with my with Manny Diaz you know on the hot seat all these injuries and stuff piling up for the Hurricanes how do you let him throw for four touchdowns and 300 plus yards passing NC State help me help me understand Help me understand why Charleston Rambo, who transferred from Oklahoma, remember, got two of those touchdowns. You know, how do you how do you justify this? I mean, Devin Leary played pretty good, two TDs, no picks. But this Kane's defense was a lot more resilient. Way more resilient. 
at the end, despite all that controversy, despite all this nonsense that's been going on with the Hurricanes program, we have another upset. That's the that's that's, that's got to be humiliating for for NC State. You know, big obviously that big win against Clemson means nothing now, and this game just proves another point. The ACC is looking weird this year. Very weird conference this year, man. It's crazy. Crazy stuff. USC Notre Dame. Now, Drake London had 15 receptions, and USC made a late surge, but you know, if it weren't for Kyron Williams again and this defense, I mean, this duo of quarterbacks has been alright. You know, they've been going with Buchner and Cohn. They went with them tonight. But I mean, man, defense for Notre Dame. Back on point. Kyron Williams on point. This is the type of stuff Notre Dame needs, you know, to be on point. This will help Cincinnati out a lot because, you know, Indiana's not pulling their weight, obviously, because, I mean, Indiana has probably one of the toughest schedules in all college football. But Notre Dame winning helps out a lot for Cincinnati. Good on Notre Dame for taking care of business against a mediocre USC team who... Who knows who their coach will be next year? A lot of people are saying it's James Franklin. <laughs> Come on now. I don't know who their coach is going to be next year. I hope it's not. I hope it's not him. I mean, man, that dude's inconsistent. You know. Last but not least, South Carolina, Texas A&M. Now, keep in mind, we all wrote Texas A&M off for dead a couple weeks ago. But a win against Alabama must have sparked that defense because, my God, 11 yards, South Carolina, in the first half? You only had 11 yards in the first half? Hey. What? You can't You can't be serious. Just 11 yards? That's it? That's all you had? Help me, help me understand it. Help me understand it. It doesn't make any sense, man. It doesn't make any sense. And A&M, oh boy. What a huge victory for the Aggies as their schedule also is going to get a lot tougher in the next couple of weeks. Again, you know, these these SEC teams, you know, in the West are having another crazy duel with each other. You know, the SEC West is going to be crazy once again this year. I can tell you that much right now. As we are a little over halfway into the season, and you know, the crazy thing is is that. You know, how are we only halfway into the season with 50 plus top 25 teams falling at this point? I believe it's 50 plus now. Or at least almost 50 top 25 teams. How do, how do we do this? Another top 10 team falls. You know, this is, this is a crazy season, and I don't know where it's going to lead us next week. We have, a, we have at least one top 10 matchup next week, and I believe we might have another top 25 matchup. I'm not sure. I don't know what the AP poll is going to look like. This will be the last. Um, next week will probably be the last week that we'll have Tuesday videos for, you know, the college football, you know, previews and stuff because I'll be going by the committee's rankings on November 2nd, so whenever they release their poll, I believe it's November 2nd that they release their poll and stuff, you know, things are going to get even more interesting, you know, how, again, this has been a crazy year, so how are things going to turn out with those rankings when they come out in November, that first week of November, I believe. But that's it. That's all I gotta say about, you know, updates for College Football Videos Go. I will see you all for the next preview on Tuesday for college football and the recap will be Sunday night it'll be or rather Saturday night leading into Sunday it'll be probably 2 a.m. thanks to San Diego State winning so let's get prepped for another crazy college football week coming soon everybody y'all take care Remember to buy my first book. Uh, I, I, I will keep shilling it for a while. I want you guys to buy it. It should uh, it should probably you know have, make it a description point somewhere. But you can go back to the um, you can go back to the uh, the October update video and stuff like that. So go get that link. I'll, I'll probably try and link it again here soon. 
again watch watch some other videos as well you know like share comment I love comments I love responding to comments you know those are the types of things that feed the algorithm well and you know of course the videos the amount of videos I do each and every week so yeah that's gonna do it here guys um, I'll see you all Monday or probably Tuesday you know definitely Monday for the um, NFL recap obviously and Tuesday for the college football preview and then Thursday Thursday evening for the NFL preview for the next week and then you know, Sunday you know late Saturday night it leaning into Sunday college football recap so that's gonna how that's how the schedule is gonna work so that, that's how that's how you know um, just as usual pretty, pretty much as usual around here so yeah That'll do it. Y'all take care. Have a good night. Big Boy Sports, signing out.